over here, dear. We had a big day yesterday. We drove all the way from Honeymoon Bay to this little free camp yeah. called Han cool. River. There you go. We were, what, eight hours in the car? Probably. Yeah, long it's a time. long day. But it's sort of, by the time we filled up at Drysdale and dropped another 400 bucks on fuel, you don't really want to pay another 50 or 60 bucks a night for camping. And we'd heard about this one from some young people up in Honeymoon, said this is a good spot to camp. So we come in here, we got here a bit late, but check this out, mate. I'm going to take you for a walk down the creek. It is absolutely beautiful. You can pull pretty. up here, you can swim. It's like fresh, shallow, sandy bottom. It's nice. Can't beat it. Can't Free beat camp. It. Free camp, mate. Let's go for a look. How nice is that? Oh, it's cold. It is cold. Yes, Imagine though, if we got here yesterday lunchtime, you'd just be sitting down here with a cold beer well the kids wouldn't i would be in this creek mate it is so nice there you go chuck Han river on your list it's a good little campsite heaps of room too all up the side of the creek um i'll put the drone up to show you what it looks like and then today we're heading to a place called mount barnett station because it's someone's birthday tomorrow yeah how old are you bro nine it'll be nine tomorrow it's pretty pumped isn't he yeah <laughs> so we'll go to mount barnett today and i think we can explore a few gorges from there See you later, Han River. Hello. Manning Gorge. Righto. Hey, we're at the Mount Barnett Roadhouse. Now, of course, there's another hidden fee. Always. Tell Always. us a story, dear. No, so I went in there. Um, we're going to camp the night here. So here or Manning Gorge? Manning Gorge. Yeah, oh. there's no camping here. She oh, just okay. said there's no yeah. camping at the roadhouse. There's only camping at the gorge. So it was $50 for a night's accommodation and your passes to get into Manning Gorge. So if you just want to do a day trip here, and this, you're a family, two adults, three kids or whatever, it'll be 20 bucks. So they mustn't charge for kids, but it's $10 per adult to get into the gorge, and then it's $15 per adult to stay in the campground. There you go. But it's a good little roadhouse if you're wanting, um, yeah. Fuel. Uh, yeah, there's bread here, there's milk, eggs, like there's a little store in there if you need some supplies. We topped there's up with also, water. Yep, topped up with water here. Um, they give you like a little bit of a mud map here and some rules on the back. So you've got to apparently go and see the caretaker straight away. It's census day. Oh, so we've got mean? to fill out our census forms. Oh, how do you do that? Caretaker gives them to you. Oh. So we've got to fill out those. And then um, she advised that it was about an hour and a half walk into the gorge. Um, and it says on here, don't attempt it after 2 p.m. because the because of the gorges, the sun well, it gets dark very early in there. Right. So um, yeah, she said if you want to get moving, we need to get moving, or right. else. And it's very hot the walk. She said, very exposed, take loads of water. Well, do you want to do it today or tomorrow? Well, that's what she actually said. I'd reckon you should do it tomorrow morning. Okay. But I was like, it's Jack's birthday. We'll see what Jack wants to do. Righto, 7 k's from the roadhouse down their little private track to Manning Gorge campsite. Let's do it. Got to figure out if we're going to do this walk today or in the morning. Alright, we're ready to go. Are you reckon we're ready to go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we might have left it a bit late in the day. It's super hot. But Beck is carrying about 25 litres of water. Is that right? Pack horse, yeah. Pack horse. We've got food. We've got cool towels these little things here so hopefully these things. we're going to swim through the start of the creek and then um hopefully we're cool enough to walk up there now how long did it say it was going to take she said it takes an hour to an hour and a half well she said an hour and a half but i reckon we'll get it done in an hour all right happy days yeah we'll take you down you gotta put all your gear in these little tubs and swim across the creek it's gonna be good we've been looking forward to this for we years have, we've mate. heard about manning gorge for such a long time so it's nice to be here and finally doing the walk have a crack. The swimming hole down here is ripper too. This is our campsite with Nardo. Absolute corker. Little fire pit and the water hole is just here. Yeah. Right kids, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Perfect. Oh God, can I, can I put my hat in there? Yeah, you can put your hat in there. Oh. 
catch. <laughs> oh, how cool is this? There you go. You hang on to the rug. You hang on to the rug. Hey, you come and go, come on. I'm holding on to Dad's shoulder. Billy, you want to hold on to my hand? Dry my feet. Yeah. Hey. How cool was that, mate? Yeah, that was really awesome. Nice, cool um, way to start the walk too. Like you're feeling really cool. Absolutely. I haven't done anything like that. It's so nice. I can't wait to swim there but with a cold did... tin at sunset, mate. I tell you. We did get the hot tip to take your shoes off there and put them back on on this side because there's no water that you walk through to get to the waterfall. So true. Yeah, you don't want to be sloshing around. In wet boots for an hour and a half, do you, Rue? Oh, question. I already yeah. did it. So. <laughs> All right, we'll get cracking and show you this gorge when we get there. How you going, miss? Good walk? <laughs> what have you lost your voice? Geez, that'd be a first, wouldn't it? Oh, wouldn't that be awesome, though? Wouldn't that be a quiet trip in the car oh, if Birdie didn't have a voice? That. Wow. She's a wop, 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 wop. She didn't stop. <laughs> but then I couldn't talk when I'm hungry. That'd be even better. You wouldn't hear I'm hungry 47 times a day. Because then, then I'll die. You're going to do the jump? Yes. She's going to jump. <laughs> this would be hilarious. I'm going to jump. I already jumped. You ready for the scream though? You wait for it, mate. Did you tell the story about what just happened to you? <laughs> Not yet. I'll tell you this funny story in a second. Are you going to jump off? <laughs> It's not funny, it's embarrassing. <laughs> That's hilarious, mate. All right, ready? Ah! Woo! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> <Stop! laughs> yeah. Right on, Rudy, you're up. Straight out where Mum went. Hurry, I'm going to stay down on my back. Go, buddy. Quick, go. Three, two, one. Go! Yay! What do you reckon of that, mate? Oh, that was fun, but scary. <laughs> it's super high. It is. You what should do, you do the waterfall, though. Nah, I already oh, can't no. feel my ears properly. Ready, <laughs> steady, go! Right, we fill us in on your embarrassing story here oh, at Manning Gorge. So I was standing like right here and I had some bike shorts on and my bathers and I went to pull down my bike shorts and I pulled down my bike shorts and my like my bikini bottoms. <laughs> but the worst part is there was a chick standing right behind me like maybe two metres away and then another couple to my left about 10 metres away and they witnessed the whole thing. You got the so full moon in the middle of the day. I got the full moon. So I'm a good welcome. Hi, my name's Becky, he's my mom. <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh, only you did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Typical Rebecca. <laughs> what a spot to have a full moon though. <laughs> Check it. <laughs> well, there you go. That was Manning Gorge, mate. What'd you think of that, bud? That was probably the best so far. I reckon. That's yeah. the best we've seen on the Gibbs so far, mate. And one of the best water holes in Australia. There's no doubt about that. Anyway, then we've got our little trek back. Me and Beck reckons we're talking about an hour. By the time you take your shoes off, get across the river and hike in. If you're fair moving, it's about an hour. Agreed? Yeah. Happy days. The so there you go. An hour to one of the best water holes in Australia. I reckon it's well worth it. What's it like as your last day as an eight year old? Mm, pretty much the same. What's your favourite thing about being eight? Being eight? <laughs> what, was, what are you most looking forward to about being nine? All my presents. <laughs> All your presents. <laughs> Happy birthday, happy birthday. Whose birthday is it? Mine! It's Rui's. How old are you, bud? Nine! <laughs> oh. Alright, get stuck into it. You've been waiting so long. Rip them open, mate. Nothing! 
Oh, no way. What? No, I don't, I have no idea what this is, but what is it? <laughs> Supersonic flash rockets. Anyway, Jacko's nine years old. We are at Manning Gorge campsite. Uh, we're gonna have a cruisy one today. He always requests the kids get to run the show, don't they, dear? They do. They get. Yep. We're doing. Oh, it's a Jack Day. Done. Jack Day. So he's requested waffles oh, for that's breakfast. They've travelled all the way from Kununurra. This is in one piece. Nerf gun. Uh, oh, Nerf gun. Sick. So Rui's gonna open his presents. He wants to go for a swim. After he has his waffles. Tackle Mate, bag. it's gonna be a good day. It's all about you, Ru. Oh, his own tackle bag. Happy days. That one. Oh, what's that little one? I got a watch. Oh, no way. I've been waiting for one. Always awesome. One. You guys, oh, yeah. If you can't tell, Beck's got OCD about the cleanliness of her van. She can't even let the wrapping paper stay no, there really until he finishes. Clean it as I go. <laughs> I bet you I'll work in Oh, do that. what's this one? <gasps> I've been waiting for this. Oh, the no way. The Ultrasonic White Raider. Oh, is that Lego Ninjago? Yes, I love it. Oh my God, spin it around, show me. It splits into four vehicles. Oh, what? <laughs> Man, that is epic. Oh, I, I've been waiting for this Ultrasonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're stuck. Oh, happy birthday, Rui. <laughs> Puss, love you, mate. Hi, you're a good you man. Hey. Love you, Rui. Big nine-year-old, I can't believe it. How many birthdays you had on the road, do you reckon? None. No, not nine. I think he's had five oh, or six. Six, I think. Yeah, this is six. his six, yeah. sixth birthday in a caravan. It's crazy. Yeah. Maybe five. We'll have to work it out. That's all right. Like. All right, and then um, what do you reckon? Brecky, then a swim? Yep. Happy days. It's oh. going to be the best day. Yeah. Stoked for you. Everyone say happy birthday, Rue. Happy, happy birthday, birthday. Rue! Thank you. I'm making mum sitting in the back because it's my birthday. So um, when we like, when we're allowed to sit in the front, on our birthdays we go, Mum, you're sitting in the back. But so, Dad should sit in the back and Mum should drive. No, I reckon Dad should drive. We're, we're hooking up on, we're on the van, so um, I'm driving. Me, the rooster, the rooster, the rooster. Oh, look how happy she is about sitting in the back. Only because I get car sick. <laughs> She's lying. I am not lying. It's the I one day of the year. Sick. Yeah, and now I have to be sick all day. You do not. We're going about, buddy, 40 k's up the road. She'll be okay. I like this, Jack. You should have birthdays more often. Yeah. How you going back there, dear? All right, for now. See you later, Manning Gorge. Hello. Galvin's Gorge. There I we think. go. I think. Galvin's Gorge. There we go. Mount Barnett Station, Galvin's Gorge Park and Walk. I didn't know that. Galvin's Gorge is part of Mount Barnett. Oh, there you go. For camping, please use Manage Gorge. Manning. Manage. Manning. And pay your fees at the roadhouse. We've there done that. Go. So now we're moving on. We'll show you what the track's like, but apparently it's super easy. So if you've got little ones, this is the perfect gorge to go to on the gift. There you go. It's funny, because already we've seen about five cars drive straight past us. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. I think they <clears throat> They're all too busy just going to the main ones. Yeah, well, stop. Bell's pretty close. You know what a, a good saying is? Just stop and smell the roses. Look at me. Hey, look at you. Smelling the roses. Oh right. gosh. You never smell oh, roses. Right. Like. That is crazy. That is Galvin's Gorge, mate. And look at that. Everyone was driving straight past, and we're the only ones here. Oh, oh mate. I'm going for a swim. Hey, I found a little secret weapon when you come to Galvin's Gorge. There's the waterfall over there. There's this tree here, and it's got a mad rope swing in it. It might be tied up when you see it. Uh, if not, there's a, a stick. Hmm. <laughs> a special rope grabbing stick. Anyway, it's cool. I'll get the kids on it now and give you a look. Are you ready to go? Yep. Three, two, one, go! Oh, I'm coming! It's all worried. Oh, I missed it. It's hard to grab the rope on the way back in. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Woo. This, I'm declaring it, this is my favourite swimming hole on the Gibbs so far. I thought yesterday was, but this one's just top today. What do you reckon? Yeah, and plus we have it to ourselves because everyone keeps driving past. <laughs> Woo! 
Your turn, Rosa. Jack, happy birthday. <laughs> hey. Happy was this your birthday, bro? Yeah. So <laughs> good. Epic. A waterfall jumps with your old man. Hey, it's not even lunchtime. This is so cool. You know what I can't wait for? I can't wait to look back on these when like the kids are 18 and stuff and we're just sitting around having a few beers. Yeah. It's gonna be epic, mate. To see the stuff we've done with these kids over the last five years. Oh. Getting all sentimental. I know, you do that what a beautiful when your baby spot. turns nine, hey? High five. Yeah. That was unreal, bud. <laughs> so proud of you. Legend. Hey, bye-bye, Galvins. You've upgraded to the center seat, my love. Yes, but would you believe it, these two were fighting, so. <laughs> We're going into Adcock Gorge, I'll give you a hot tip. There's a little free camp across the road from the turn off. Unhook your van there. We took the turn off and drove about 200 meters in and it's rough as, I'm like, oh. Not towing the van three k's in here, like it was rough. And when you look at it on wiki camps, it says four wheel drive only, no um, caravan symbols or whatever, but we're just unhooked there. There's a few a... other vans unhooked there too. There is, yeah, I'd say people are gonna camp there as well. But we're just gonna duck in it's supposed to be a quick walk to see the gorge from the Deus area down here. We'll do that, we'll come back, then it's Bruce's birthday cake time, isn't it? Yep. Birthday cake, and then that we're gonna cool. hot foot it to a free camp somewhere up, maybe called Dog Chain Creek or something, Beck? Yeah, or Silent Grove. Or Silent Grove, that's not free, but anyway, this is that rough road, so I am gonna get hooking without the van on, it won't be so rough. We'll take you in and show you Adcock Gorge. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rooster. Happy birthday to you. Hip 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 hooray! 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 But it's a bit of a mission to park where we're going to park, so Rui's going to take this and we'll guide me on, all right? No, no, have a look at that though. That's rough stuff, right there. All right, keep coming. The van's all good, Dad. Slow, slow. Whoa. This is our campsite here at Bell Creek, mate. I'm going to take you for a walk because there's a wicked spot for the kids down here. A little track, look at this. You can camp right on the edge. You just walk down this little track to a set of rapids. There's a deeper swimming hole on this side. But I'll take you down for a look. Free camp, only about three or four k's from the turn off to Silent Grove and Bell Gorge. Um, and I'd recommend just stopping here, mate, and leaving your van and just running back in, in the car because that 29 k's in is pretty rough, or it was at this stage when we did it anyway. And you get this, mate, for free. Look at that, silent gorge you have to go and pay for. This one here, you can go and do the gorge, come back, sit down here with a tin, the kids can play for hours. That's what everyone was doing last night. There's a few families parked up there further. We'd met them before on the road, they were from Port Hedland. And um, yeah, all the kids were down here having a swim around. It's fantastic, mate. Little rapids, 
up here, a bit of running water, I'll show you. Hang on a sec. Duck through here. Whoa. Come this way. Love finding a good free camp, eh? So much better than paying through the teeth for a hot, dusty bowl. Look at that. Beautiful. And up this way. Yes. There you go. That's Bell Creek, mate, the free camp. Morning, how are you? Uh, this morning we are heading into a place called Bell Gorge and it's only about three k's to the turn off to Silent Grove and Bell Creek and then it's 29 k's in. Now you can camp in here as well, Silent Grove is a campground but it's a paid one uh, and it's only 10 k's from the gorge but I'll tell you what, the road in from the main gib was rough as guts so I'm glad we've just unhooked our van there and we've ducked in early this morning at seven o'clock and we're gonna take you for a look along the um, Bell Gorge, mate. It's like the last sort of biggish walk that we're going to do. I think it's how far, dear? Two... It's two k's in. Oh, there so, you go. And it's an easy walk, apparently. So. Happy days. Yeah. Which is pretty good. I mean, <laughs> why don't you get to this stage of the gib, oh, and you just sort of start to get a bit gorged out. Yeah, we side. are a bit. I mean, yeah. The kids are a bit walked out. They're like, oh, do we have to do another big walk? So, luckily, we've got a few ice creams in the freezer. Uh, and this is our last big yeah. walk, and then we've got um, Winjana Gorge on the way west, uh, and that's only a short walk from the car park. So we've done well, we've done real well. <laughs> Bell Gorge, mate. We're on it. <laughs> We're on it. Still, it's eight o'clock in the morning. It's the last one. I just read there, it's two oh, kilometers nice in, and then you walk up above the falls and look down on the whole thing. So I'm keen, very keen. It's our last big walk on the gig. <laughs> Stuck. We've done well. It's kind of like a bit of an achievement, I reckon. Yeah, we did the gig, mate. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. We're nearly there. Nearly there. Yeah. We're just on the way here, and she goes, Where's the neurofin? I'm like, What for? She goes, My blisters are sore. <laughs> <laughs> that was before the bloody walk. So we'll see how we go after no, four I'm kilometers good. of I bloody rock crawling. Socks. Did you? Yes. It's all in the socks, eh? Anyway. Yes. Socks She's been, this has been her big plan, right? She's constantly. Throwing these little blips out there about blisters from her boots, you know why? Because I know she wants a new pair. She's seen get... that she's spotted these other Blundstone Chelsea's, I even know the brand and name. And they're you more, they're more stylish. The they're them. more stylish than these ones. They are, they're nice and they're softer leather. Of course they are. So they're but blister they're free. The price. Blister free, she reckons. Yeah. Mm, anyway. It's my treat for doing the gym. <laughs> I know she's gonna thank buy you. them anyway, so thank whatever. Thanking my feet. They're going. Yeah. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> ah, well, I need a new hat, actually. I lost my bloody oh, Akubra. Yeah. I think I left it in Birchie's car at Home Valley, but <laughs> no chance of getting that back. I'll have to buy another one in Broome. Yeah, you can't not have Oh, I've been missing it, eh? Yeah, it covers your whole head. They're so good. I tell you what, if you don't have one for your travels, get one. Because they're so good for keeping the sun off you when you're walking, yeah. fishing. Mine's four around. years old, I worked out. It is. It needs a good wash, I reckon. There you go. That's a bit of belt. Bell Gorge chit chat for you. <laughs> Let's get there, eh? Well, there you go, mate. That behind me is Bell Gorge. Have a look at this. Wow. It's really not far at all. Only like a K from the campground in, so it's two Ks return. You can keep walking to like the top falls. So it's a class five walk and it's another two hours return from here. But for us, this will do. We might make our way over the cliff and down the bottom for a swim. You can get down there, but this is the spot for a photo, mate, up the top here. It's bloody nice. I tell you what, I've picked the worst afternoon to decide to cook a, um, a hot pot in the camp oven because it's about 47 degrees at Winjana Gorge, but it's sort of gonna be probably our last chance to have a campfire, so, and I've got the meat out already, so it's gotta be done. It's just gotta be done. Hopefully, give it another 20 minutes, hopefully, the sun's going down enough that I'll get the shade in there and I won't be cooking in the blaring hot sun. Anyway. I'll show you how I'll do it. Actually, it's gonna be a first for me too, so hopefully it'll work out.
first step in my masterpiece of the um, camp stew is I've got the fire going. Now I'm going to drop all my veggies in. So anything you can find that's left in your fridge after a camping trip. I've got celery, carrot, potato, sweet potato, a couple of onions. There you go. I'm going to jam that in my um, camp oven. I'm going to sprinkle a couple of these over. Those Maggi's um, beef goulash. There's two of those packets. I'm going to pour a whole beer on it. I'm going to pour a cup of red wine in there. And I'm also going to give it a splash of Worcestershire sauce. And I'll tell you what, the secret ingredient that I learnt years and years ago, my first year out of school, I was working with a bloke who did like contract fencing for horse yards and that. And we used to go away and cut timber. And he used to make stews a lot. He used to put a big tablespoon of this in, mate. And this was his secret sauce. Ready? Would you believe it? Vegemite. Big spoonful of that, mate. There you go. I'll jam all the veggies in and then I'll, I'll get the beef ready. We'll chuck that in and then sit it on the fire, right? <laughs> Vegemite. Radio, here's the meat. So in Kununurra, we stocked up on a heap of stuff from the butcher at Kununurra. Real good butcher there, right? Eh? Right near Coles, if you need stuff when you, before you're hitting the gib or if you're passing through Kunners. Um, I got a whole rump and I cut up a heap of steaks and I cut up, I diced a heap up like this, knowing that I'd do either a curry or a stew. So um, this is it, defrosted, ready to go. Always, when you make a stew or a curry, if you think you've got enough meat, double it, then you'll have enough meat. Anyway, a bit of flour. So what I do this for, I flour them up and roll them around and then fry them off or brown them off before I put them in the stew. And that only, what it does, it sort of seals the meat, keeps it a bit juicy, but it also like this flour and that turns into a bit of a gravy in your stew. So yeah, be pretty rough with it, eh? Just slap it on, mix it all up, probably a little bit more. Then cook it off in a bit of butter or olive oil. Oh, there you go. That's how you want it to look. Just browned off. You don't want to cook it too much. You don't want it to sit in there and so cook, but just want to brown it off so they're nice and juicy and hold their flavour when you chuck them in the stew. Wow. Swing in, crew. All right, this is the last walk we're gonna do on the gib. <laughs> you happy about that? Yeah. <laughs> we had to bribe them with a super duper to even get them to do it. It is a big haul for little kids, mate. We've been um, been working them pretty hard, doing walks most days, and they're a bit knackered. So they're pretty stoked that we're nearly finished. So this one will be Winjana Gorge. While well, we've got the camp oven on the fire, we're gonna go down and have a look at this gorge, see if we can't spot a few crocodiles, then come home, have dinner, and a few marshmallows. What do you reckon? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm building They're my keen to be done, do you? I They're know. Keen. Well, I'm taking a bulk to celebrate. Oh, mate. Always the bargain. Oh, Don't my God. That. that is not... It's unreal mate. Yeah, I'm gonna kick my shoes off. It's all sandy. Literally like a couple of minutes from the car park. Have a look at this. Look at this huge cliff, look up here. There's a massive cliff. Then all these trees and sand. <laughs> ah, this is cool. I like this one, Beck. Nice time of the day too. Look at this, ready? Look at this cliff. Have a look at that. What? Oh, it makes you feel like you're gonna fall over backwards looking up at it. All right, let's go and find some crocodiles. Dad, look how deep this one goes. That oh, that's a big cave, isn't it? Look at that. Come on. I'm going to jump 
off the cliff and I'll jump here and run you over. Out there. Yeah, can you see him laying in the water? Oh, I'm looking at that one out there. Oh no. There's one just... there's one up on the sandbar. Yeah, that's, one, there. that's the one that I spotted. Yeah, yeah that one. Just, oh, I spotted it. No, there's look, look, one, there's the one in the water. Another one out the end there. I reckon there's one there, there's lots of bubbles coming up. Yeah. There you go. What do you reckon of when Jana Gorge? It's pretty good. <laughs> You've seen too many, mate. You're gorged out. Yeah. Have a look at it. It's so uh, there's the top. Come all the way down. Wow. So cool. Spotted a couple of crocs, a few barra, lots of fish, and the sun's going down in the gorge. It's gonna get dark in here pretty quick. I like this one, Beck. Yeah, this is really pretty. I'd recommend coming in here, and you don't need shoes. That's even it's better. It's all sandy, it's just beautiful. I reckon and I think it's this time of the day though. Golden like hour. It's, yeah, the sun's going down, the birds are coming out. It's just a really nice time. Mm. You it's can do hot. um, you can do like a 7K no, walk no, that takes no, you all no, the way no, up the gorge that way. But for us, 10 minutes in, last gorge on the gib. Just bring your knee grubs up. I can put this down now, it doesn't matter if it gets dirt in it. Have a look at this. Check it out there. Yum. So good. All right, so like? Ooh, like a stew, yummy. perfectly cooked by moi. Hey, um, plan is, Ow. you can go first, Bill. Grab okay. a bowl, grab a spoon. Now hold your bowl. Come past, and I'm going to scoop some out for you. <laughs> Look at this. It's like drive through. Drive through camp food. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Take your spoon. Off you go. Next. Bye bye. <laughs> really? Oh. Ready? How much do you reckon, boss? Oh, 50. Two scoops. Oh, look at that. That is so good. Next. Come on, Charlie Bear. Oh. <laughs> You're coming in closer. Hey, you should smell it. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it. I might be calling it early, but I reckon it's probably the best camp stew these kids are ever going to eat. What do you reckon, Bear? Done. It's done? Do you want a little yeah. bit more? No. No? no. Oh, all right. Next. Me. You, Bezzy. You, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> Take Billy. this. I'll serve it up for you. Ah. There you go. Hey, while I got you, I know you're going to ask um, this camp oven and that. I'll tell you what, it's one of the best things we've ever got. We always wanted a camp oven, but you know the, the cast iron ones are too heavy. So this one is a hillbilly camp oven kit. It comes with all this gear, like a little rack, the thing, the lid a topper, like a fry pan lid. It's killer. Yeah. Super lightweight. You just gotta get into it, yeah. And they're not that expensive. They're a couple hundred bucks, I think, for the full setup, but I'll tell you what, it's well worth it. You've got everything you need. So I'll drop some links in the bottom here for you. You can check that out. There you go, dear. Thank That's you. yours. This is mine. Yum. We're gonna sit down and toast to our, most likely gonna be our last night on the gib. Yeah. So I'll fill up my bowl. There we go. As they say in America, bon appetit. <laughs> That's really meat. nice, yeah. That meat just like falls apart. Mm. Uh, well, Alright, see you later, Winjana Gorge. Hello, Debbie. Debbie, we're Ooh. incoming. 120 Ks once we get back off this road. So it's 20 Ks out of Winjana Gorge, then 120 from there to Derby. We're just gonna see how we go. Um, once we get service, we can ring ahead, see if we can get into Derby. Or there's another place called Birdwood Downs, which is a U camp, which is only 20 k's out of Derby hmm. on the Gib. So, see how we go. Um, yeah, pretty excited actually to get off the red dirt. Oh. It's been, um, how long? 17 days? Two and a half days? weeks. Two and a half yeah. weeks. And I'll tell you what, it's relentless. It's um, unforgiving and it's rough. But it's a whole lot of fun as well. Don't it worry is. about it's that. It's been the best couple of weeks. Anyway, we'll get out of here and. Um, You'll probably see me when we find the bitumen. I'll be uh, rolling around on it, giving it a big fat kiss. <laughs> okay, so you might be wondering why we didn't do Tunnel Creek, but unfortunately it is closed until further notice, which we're super disappointed about because it is an excellent walk, especially for kids. But um, apparently there was like falling rocks and they're geo-surveying it or something. But if you do get to Tunnel Creek, make sure you take head torches. It is completely dark. It is a fantastic walk. Um, I think it's only about 500 meters to get to the end and then you turn around and come back and there's a couple of freshies in there. So definitely add that to your gib itinerary. Ah. Best feeling. Ah, I'll tell you what, 
I haven't been this keen to hit the bitumen since we got off the cape, babe. And so I, good. Mate, like you did at the cape, you have to have a go. Come on. No! Get down there. Get down there. Oh, it's In the middle of the gib. Oh! <laughs> oh, how good's that? Oh, mate, I tell you what, it is a long and it's a tough road. I feel really quite accomplished, my love. We've done the gib. We have done the gib. Yeah. And I, oi, have a look at the hat. Look at the hat. We preempted it. I bought this in Kununurra from the info center. I Jack. did the gib. I did buy it for Jack, yeah. but I stole it to the end of it. I tell you what, we've smashed it, mate. We've absolutely smashed it. Yeah. Take this. So, when Jana Gorge was the last stop, and then about 30 k's this side, it's bitumen, and it's bitumen all the way to Derby. So we've, oh, there's a compressor. We've pulled up. I'm going to air up the tyres, and we're going to get hooking, mate. But what I want to do, I just want to come and have a quick chat about the gear, because at the start of this video, we told you, hey, Bill, I might just get you to get off the middle of the highway, son. As I told you at the start of this video, the Gib is renowned to be a caravan killer, right? And it lived up to its name, mate, not with our gear, but the amount of cars and caravans we've seen on tilt trays going the other way, um, parked up at homesteads, all buckled, suspension ripped out of them, um, tires shredded. Like, we feel grateful, mate, that like, the van has absolutely smashed it. Not one thing wrong with the van. All we did in the van was we lost a jar of cinnamon sugar. <laughs> That's it, it fell over and it's rattled and we lost our cinnamon sugar. The car, absolutely brilliant, mate. All we did was a tire. So we've got that BFG on there as a spare that we bought. Recap, we bought it at Drysdale for $625, but we shredded one tire and it already had pre-existing damage from my lovely wife in the car park. So I, I really, if I don't think it had pre-existing damage, I don't think we would have done a tire at all. You just drop your tire pressures, drive to conditions, and have good gear, mate. Honestly, oh, I can't rave enough about the build quality of both these things. To have done this without dust, without damage, mate, and we've seen plus, it. We've seen so many cars go past and they're just trashed, mate. They're absolutely trashed. No, I just want to say, plus, in the last couple of months, we've also done the Udna Dada and the Central Arnhem Road. Yeah. And, and, and now the Gib. And we did the Cape. So it's had a, a lot of K's on dirt roads and corrugations. Yeah, a lot of fatigue to the gear, so. Yeah. But that's why we built it. We've done our research before we got this mm. set up. And I'll tell you what, it's living up to its, well, just its recommendations it and its quality. Oh, it just makes it more enjoyable when stuff doesn't break. Mate, when you can trust your gear and you pull up somewhere without fixing stuff and no dust. For me, it's oh. dust. Oh. We did the gib. We did the gib. We did it, babe. We did. Mm -hmm. Well done. All right, let's go. Let's give you a quick rundown on the gear. It'll be very quick because, like I said, we made it pretty well unscathed through the trip. Um, up front, bull bar, spotties, uh, winch, underbody stuff, everything schmicko, not a loose bolt. Mate, we come across people, their bull, bull bars had fallen off from shear and bolts. Um, their spotties are gone, their covers are gone, their roof racks are falling off. Like, I, I don't know what they do, but I, I know it's an unrelenting road, like it's bloody rough, but I don't know. Our gear, mate, there's nothing come loose on there, so we're stoked. I do check it though, whenever we stop, if there's anything ever a little bit loose or something, I'll nip it up, use Loctite on bolts, that sort of thing. Make sure when you do hit the rough stuff, you're not gonna lose bits, because you won't know, mate. You'll be flying along these dirt roads, shaking to bits, and you won't even know if something drops off the front. You'll get there, your spotty could be gone, and you would not have even known it fell off. Anyway, come through here. Um, car, hey kids, what do you reckon? We did the gib. Yeah! We did the gib. You stoked about gib. that or what? When we get to Derby, you're going to spend your 50 bucks from your birthday. That's what he reckons. No, when we get to Broome. When we get to Broome. All right, I'll keep going with this. Oh. Hey, boat loader, I'm stoked with that, mate. Like, up on top there, probably most vulnerable to shaking around with all the corrugations. Mate, doesn't come loose. Yes, I do have a little bit of wear on me um, pads now from the tinny rubbing on them, but, I mean, that's what they're there for. You can always replace them. It's a bloody rough road, mate. But to be able to get where we got up to Honeymoon Bay, pull our gear off, nothing's wrong with it you know what i mean we can just chuck it in the water and have at her we met people up there that got up there they put their boats in the water and they started sinking they've cracked their tinnies they've got holes in them from really? rubbing on racks yeah those young fellas we met so anyway i'm stoked almac wicked loader the canopy mate like i've said before it changes your life when you get a good canopy the norweld no dust no water it's secure no damage mate look at this after over a thousand k's up here on the gib, I can wipe any of these aluminium surfaces and there is no dust, just a bit of alloy. It is so good, mate. When you keep all your oh, worldly belongings in here, especially a lot of camera gear and stuff in your fridge, you don't want it to be shaking around, uh, getting filthy and all that sort of stuff. So I'm stoked, mate. 
All right, the van, let's talk about a few things on the van that I reckon are a must if you're gonna do these rough roads like the Gib, the Cape, Central Arnhem, all that. Uh, first one being up the front, Stone Stomper, mate. If you don't have one of these on your van doing these sort of roads, it is gonna get destroyed. The front of it will get smashed with shale and gibber stones and dust and everything else. Like this thing here, yes, they're a bit expensive. They cost about 750 bucks to set up, but once you've got it, mate, they're so good. They stop all the damage to the front of your van. It is out of control how good they are. I will never have another van without one. It is so bloody good. Uh, up front, you really need an off-road hitch. I've got the DO45. Cruise Master, they make a DO35 as well, which is three and a half ton van. Ours is a four and a half ton van. Just having that hitch to be able to articulate through the whoops, through the washouts, um, oh, and all, you know, you get up on the side of the road, your van's up like this, your van's down like this, you're going in and out. You hit high speed dust holes, that hitch there, mate, it's silent, it's smooth, and it lets your van move, you know? Really good thing. All right, now, apart from the build quality of the van, which is unreal, because we've had no dramas, like no dust, no damage, no shaking, no loose screws, any of that sort of stuff. Uh, the biggest thing for that is the suspension, mate, all right? Now, get under here. I've shown you all before, and you know I love it. Hang on a sec. Oh, is this gear, mate. The Cruise Master ATX airbag with discs. Oh my God. I have, I cannot speak highly enough of this stuff, and I actually love it. Like, I'm gonna say it, I love it. I love my suspension. It might sound weird, but when you, when you drive with this and you know the ride quality that it gives your van, man, like that's why we don't have anything loose and rattled and damaged in our van, is because this stuff does all the hard work to take it out. So you've got airbags and you've got remote resi shocks. Perfect for rough corrugations because the remote reservoir houses more oil, they don't get hot, they don't cook the seals in your shockies. And the airbags, yeah, there's a couple of different sorts of airbags around. Now these ones, for me, are the pick because it doesn't matter what pressure you run in these bags, you retain the air quality, the same ride quality of the suspension. So other bellows types bags, if you pump them up harder to get more ground clearance, you're gonna have a stiffer ride. With these, it doesn't matter whether you're, well, you don't wanna run them with nothing in them because you'll be on the bump stops, but you can have them at half height or you can have them at full height, you're still gonna have the same ride quality, so it's not gonna shake the sh out of your van, right? Um, Righto, that's about all I can tell you under here. And tyres, I suppose. Last one is tyres. Like, we only did one, and I'm 100% I'm sure that it was because of the pre-existing damage, but if you had just had poxy tyres that come factory fitted from the caravan manufacturer and stuff, or your dealer for your car, I can guarantee you, you'll do way more than one tyre. Like, they just don't have the structure and the quality to handle this sort of stuff, like low pressure, sharp rocks, harsh, harsh corrugations, mate. Anyway, there you go. That's my couple of big tips. If you want to do a heap of roads, like we have, like the Cape, Central Arnhem, Udnadatta, now the Gib, buy once, buy right. I'll tell you what, it'll cost you more in outlay, but it's gonna save you a lot of damage in the long run, and you'll enjoy your trip a whole heap more. All right, even come to this, look at the back. Rear bar, trailer's still there, bikes are still there. Nothing shaking loose, no damage, hey? One good thing about the Gib, you don't get any more pinstripes. You don't actually go through any rough tracks. So I've got no more scratches on the side of my van. Look at this, we're just dirty, we're filthy. I love it, I love it, we've done the Gib. Anyway, there you go. Babe, we haven't even got off the road no. yet, can you? <laughs> it's the most satisfying thing, like there's all grubby prints up there and I've just got this cloth on. Oh, She's so already cleaning, mate, have a look at her. We're on I the side of the road van. still. I love a clean van. All right, inside the van. We're gonna bring you in here and give you a look while we're still on the side of the road, look behind me, uh, what it looks like after a full gib trip without any cleaning. Yeah. And then we'll take you through the cleaning process in a future video on a few tips and tricks on how to clean up. But, quick rundown, look at this. Like, this is our van, how we travel on the gib. <laughs> Have a look around. I Every did Oh. Everything's still where it should be, no broken cupboards, no loose no, drawers. Yeah, just these things wind off sometimes. Oh yeah. But they fall A couple down of there. them spin it's off. Fine. But um, look at this, even yeah. our stubby coolers stay where they are, they don't even move. That's how yeah. smooth it is in but here. But if you look really closely, especially down there, look at this, yeah. There's a lot of dirt and, and can we just acknowledge our fans, please? Oh yeah. Look at our fans. We're gonna give you show you how to um clean them properly. So pull my cart and clean them. Yeah, but otherwise this bloody caravan does the job. There you go, yeah, That's big right. thing, 
big, uh, massive kudos to these guys. Um, that there is a game changer, mate. We met yeah. um, met some people up at Honeymoon Bay with a uh, really, really expensive van. I'm going to call it about 180 grand. And they didn't have one of these. And they'd got up there and their van was full of dust. Old love was peeking out. She was like, her bed was filthy. Mm. And she was straight over us going, did you get dust and what do you do to stop it? And so they were um, going to ring their manufacturer straight away and see if they can get one of those in. <laughs> anyway. Um, we've, we've been there though. We've, we've had loads of dust oh. in our van before. And it is literally heartbreaking. heartbreaking. Yeah. Like you just walk in and you see that plume and just... Oh, it's the worst, and you have to pull out mm. every single cupboard and wash every piece of clothing. It is the worst. It's gross. Not this van, by the way. No, no, no. This was a few vans ago. Yeah. Anyway, come down the back, have a look. Even look at all our stuff. Our shelves are still hanging up. Um, sinks. Uh, I don't really know what to show you. It's just... It's, yeah, everything. It is, is as it is. The microwave's still in. Hasn't fallen out. The fridge has fallen out. I've met at least six people on this trip that their fridge has fallen out on the road. It's out of control. They pull up and the fridge is like falling out into their kitchen. So, mate. Anyway, um, out the back. Yeah, kids' cupboards, kids' beds, shower, toilets. Filthy in here. Look at all the dust and dirt and stuff. Because we're trying to save water and you you don't want to clean things out. Yeah. Yeah. So the ensuite needs a clean. Everything just needs a clean. Just needs a good clean. Super happy with how everything's. It is. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. These stayed on. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that. That's yeah. The van is as it is after the gib, mate. Yeah. We don't have to do any repairs, nothing but cleaning, which is oh, to be expected. You wait till I clean it. Oh. So there you go. Anyway, stoked. Cheers to Sunseeker, mate. You build a sick van. Yeah. We finished the gib. We did the gib. We did the gib. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. Hey, eh? thanks so much for watching the gib series. If you've got any comments, questions, feedback, drop them down below. We are just enjoying and soaking up oh. this smooth bitumen road on the way to Derby, my friend. I've got a coffee without a leaf. <laughs> it's smooth. <laughs> uh, from here on out, a bit of a quick update. We're going to be chilling out and brewing for a little bit, punch out all these bits, uh, clean the van, get our gear ready, and just get some work done and have a bit of a break for a while. Yeah. So um, we'll show you a bit more from around Broome. I can guarantee you I'll probably do a little bit of sneaky fishing. A little bit. Get out with a few blokes that I know in Broome and just hang out and have a good time. So thanks guys. As always, you're absolute legends. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time, mate. Goodbye. Woo. Oi, um, quick one. What, what was your favourite part of the gib? Waterhole. Doing the gib. Doing the gib. What was water your favourite part of the gib? Yeah, which waterhole? Um, waterhole. Waterhole? <laughs> All right, so the kid's favourite part of the gib was... Hey, <laughs> just quickly, it's a little bit of a sad day. Today, last night, we lost a family member, Colin. Oh, shut up! Colin decided to fall off around oh, the campfire. I know. <laughs> he so, did actually. <laughs> around the campfire, my scab finally came uh, off. So, goodbye, Colin the oh. Coleslaw. We will forever. We'll, we will remember, forever remember <laughs> you. Oh uh, my god. Actually, Colin, you gave us, I should do a little montage of Colin moments. Oh, shut up. That is me. <laughs>